how many of you guys have heard of Paperclip? I don't want to get into that too much. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm, in a, I'm in a hard spot. Uh, I speak after Dragon Law. Thanks, Dan. And uh, before lunch. So I'm going to make this quick, snappy. I call this talk Failure Leadership um, for a bunch of reasons. For those who know, I call myself a failure specialist. Okay? And uh, sitting down with uh, uh, Fronza for the last couple of weeks, thinking about what should this talk be about. I'm going to go through some of the details about what I've been through, okay? Which is fine. Um, I think then I was hanging out with my kids this morning and I'm like, uh, so there is the lessons after, immediately after the issues and the failures. What are the lessons 10 to 15 years later? So I think I'm in a bit of a position just to talk about that in terms of reflection, which I hope will add some value to whatever you guys are going through, okay? Um, the first kind of part uh, that I start with always, and this is a tongue-in-cheek title, is I tell people don't be an entrepreneur. Okay, and um, a lot of this is because there's just a lot of hype and kind of romance behind this whole idea of being an entrepreneur. Okay, so what was my lesson? Okay, how I started about 1995. Okay, many moons ago, and um, my whole concept of family business—that's what I originally joined. First and foremost, was this. Okay, for those who don't know, this is Li Ka Sheng and his son. Okay, and why I show this is. Kind of like I, I, I was uh, brought up with a silver spoon, put it that way, okay? Really privileged upbringing, okay? And I um, uh, was in Hong Kong for a while, high school in Switzerland, college in the States. Awesome, great, you know? Nothing wrong with that. Then I joined the family business, which uh, ultimately was, was this picture that I show. And I sh thank you for the last, somebody got it. Okay, one person got it, awesome. Okay, um, the, the whole uh, idea behind this is Thank you. The, the whole I idea behind this is I joined the family business during a time of crisis. Okay? <coughs> so this wasn't my crisis. Okay? Specifically, it wasn't my crisis, but it was a family business, so I have to handle it. All right? And um, I was somewhere down the, deep in that hole. Okay? Um, and I didn't even know where I was, to, to be honest. So what, what happened? And um, I come, I'm going to jump straight to the lessons. Okay? Um, what happened? I know you guys want specifics. Let's say, uh, my father basically had a manufacturing and trading company, offices all over the world. So I was working in Chile, Poland, Czech Republic, China, India. I mean, I was all over the place. But actually what I was doing, I was already in the eye of the storm and we were going through our bankruptcy. So 95 to 2000 or 1999, financial crisis, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so long story short, we had to close up the company. And I was personally responsible for closing up this octopus of a global octopus of a company that I didn't know and one of the things that stands out was dealing with bankers during the time and I'm not dissing bankers here I know a lot of people like to do that but that's not my point my point is in a lot of your businesses you're going to be needing to deal with bankers and banks and financing and all that and um, so here's my father who's who's been working with these banks for about 20 years or 25 years during his time effectively he'd made some of these banks I mean he was big during his time and I'm joining meetings with these banks, and a lot of people are declaring bankruptcy. So my father's saying, I'm not going to declare bankruptcy because my kids will have a future, and I don't want my kids to get, you know, uh, tainted. I'm, going, I'm joining these meetings, and one after the other, of course, they're hitting him, and they're telling him, uh, you know, you've got to pay, you know, I want a, a timeline, and we, we have no money. Literally, we have no money. And um, we're selling our assets. Push comes to shove. My dad's like, here are all my life insurances. I mean, that's how serious we were to pay. Here are all my life insurances. So nothing for the family. Here are my life insurances. And the banker in the meeting, while I'm sitting there, so these are the same bankers who've been with me as I was growing up, told my father, but you are not dead yet. Okay? So out of all the stories I can tell you, out of all the pain, you know, customers not wanting to buy products, opening in countries, where there's no rule of law. I mean, okay, you guys have heard that a million times. Talk about reality check. And talk about, you know, driving home the point of, you know, what the F am I doing actually? Okay, what the F am I doing? Um, banker is telling my father, but you're not dead yet. And he wasn't joking, because they wanted their money now. Okay? So I guess leaving that, there's a lot of trauma that's been associated with my journey of entrepreneurship because of this, okay? 
And I say the first part of this is the lessons on the first part, which is consistent effort, health is paramount, play devil's advocate. Because I think as entrepreneurs, we are very optimistic. Nothing wrong with that, but I'm going to clarify <laughs> that statement later. Okay? Um, I think as, as entrepreneurs, we, we want to uh, you know, work on the solution rather than look at the process. Okay? Um, and then this other point about just health is paramount. During this whole crisis, okay, talk about, again, failures and things not to do. We were playing around with insurances and trying to save money. We changed my mom's insurance, get something cheaper. She was then diagnosed with cancer, and the insurance wouldn't cover it. So, I mean, talk about throwing you know, oil into the fire. I mean, things, I can go on. This was just a messy time, put it that way. So personally and, and from a business point of view. Hence, I say this, and I say this to everybody. And I was to talk to myself 20 years ago, okay? The 20-year-old then would probably ask me now if I can borrow some money, okay? But anyway, um, uh, but uh, the, this is what I would tell you in the beginning, all right? And actually, this is the genesis of Paperclip, to be honest. I'm not here to talk about Paperclip too much, but why am I doing Paperclip? And this is the uh, genesis behind this, okay? And then, of course, I became an entrepreneur. I mean, we all, I think everybody is an entrepreneur at some point, and you're trying to solve a problem get out of a crisis or uh, you want to literally change the world, okay? And um, this was then the uh, whole re rebuilding phase where, again, this is me trying to get stable, building my, my base, let's just say. And uh, I was around during the whole dot-com time, okay? Um, part of the learning then was, you know, we all had a bunch of great ideas, but we, but we weren't in Silicon Valley. So while a lot of guys were fundraising, so, and I've I have my view on fundraising, by the way. While other guys were fundraising, I actually didn't want to fundraise. Now, what I didn't know that I didn't know was I was looking for a whole bunch of other resources or help. So there's my journey of the hardships of entrepreneurship. And then there's my journey of what do I need to be an entrepreneur? Okay? So these are just, just two major lessons. So the first thing is this whole small bets, manage risks. Okay? Then challenging yourself. This is the whole learning part. You know, again, I don't know what I don't know. And then uh, build your barriers to entry, the whole sustainability part, because you're going to need some kind of base at some point. This whole struggle and, and, and living day to day is good very early on. But then we've got to get realistic as a company. You've got employees. Again, it's that, path, it's that path to sustainability as a business, put it that way. Okay? And gets you thinking about this concept of, of success, right? And then nobody, nobody tells you about the... Uh, the fine print, right? It took 20 years, for example, okay? So putting, putting all, all of this uh, together, um, again, you've, you've all seen slides like this uh, talking about the reality or, you know, what we think success is versus uh, what it really means to, to uh, go through it. And this is very interesting, and, and I, I stick with these slides a lot. Um, the psychology of, of entrepreneurs. How many of you guys have seen slides, uh, this kind of slide, or along these, these lines? Okay. Well, then I'll explain it for some of you who haven't. Okay. There is this idea of, yes, we're going to go change the world. I've got this amazing idea. I can sell bottled air in Beijing. Okay. Awesome. Who wouldn't want to buy that? Okay. And this is good. This uninformed optimism stage, you know. It's high energy. You know, it's, it's amazing. It keeps you kind of youthful in a way. All right. And then there's this informed pessimism when the market is basically punching you in the face and telling you, I don't care <coughs> about your product or service or, or idea, all right? And then there's that journey of informed optimism, all right? Again, what am I doing in now? Um, I'm, I'm taking my journey, which is going to be all of your journeys. Uh, there's, there's no different blueprint in many respects. The flavors are, are going to be different, okay? And all, all these stories you're hearing, they're actually, it's this journey and, and, and a very important, I'm coming to that, a very important word that I've been learning or have learned to use in my language of early stage entrepreneurship is this word validation. Okay? And actually what this is, is, is validation. This, these pain points, this learning, this uh, frustration, all this craziness is actually stuff that we don't know what we don't know. All right? This is what I have broken down into my pain points and the problem I'm trying to solve today with respect to my painful <laughs> journeys. Okay? Entrepreneurship is lonely. So, I mean, all these conferences, and, and I use the word high value and low value in terms of 
any kind of meeting. So post-mortem definitely is one of the high value ones, okay? Entrepreneurship is lonely, so it's my journey as well, right? Perceived high risk. I use this word high risk because I tell a lot of people actually entrepreneurship is very low risk. You know, what are your options? Uh, working in a, in a safe corporate for 50 years, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Or do you want to go and start this journey of, this, I use this word of validation, but it's not just of your ideas, actually it's your personal journey. And that, I think we tend to forget very early on because again, we don't know what we don't know. If I was to tell myself, something 20 years ago is that you're not just starting your business journey, you're, you're entrepreneur, you're actually starting your self journey, okay? And that's what I think entrepreneurship is so intertwined that we, we didn't know. We're so gung-ho about our businesses and our ideas, we forget that we're actually going through a transformation. And that's what this journey is, okay? Definitely search for answers, the stuff that's not rocket science, because business building has been going on for hundreds of years, guys, okay? And then what about the rocket science part? I use the word advisors, okay? Legal, accounting, HR, tech, okay? Access to resources, definitely, okay? And then the other part, the platform. Successful entrepreneurs like to share, okay? I haven't mentioned funding, guys, all right? And again, this is the whole concept behind now. Nine out of 10 startups fail, nine out of 10 entrepreneurs fail, nine out of 10 ideas fail. I think you guys get it, all right? Okay, I, I've taken this slide from one of my workshops. So basically, it's this journey of validation that we use to test ideas. So I came across a guy called Steve Blank, all right? I went to go see him, I took his workshops, I became a believer because what he ultimately gave me was a language of early stage entrepreneurship. But a little more than that, for me, it's therapy because I went through something that was so traumatic. I actually thought I was stupid, I was crazy. It really felt like I was a failure, you know? And you know, that kind of confidence when that goes is painful. So you've got to re rebuild that as well. And in this journey of validation, I came to realize that it was about the business, which is what these business model canvases and value, um, uh, value proposition designs are all about. We talk about the business, but it's actually about yourself, all right? And uh, I'm gonna end with this slide, which is the the most important slide that I think every entrepreneur should always have every day, okay? Because it's gonna remind you about things that I know that I know fine, okay? That's stuff that you know today. And then things I know that I don't know. And this is just through your experience that suddenly, I mean, here I am talking to you guys, okay? Who, who am I? I'm just a guy who's been through many experiences, able to articulate the journey, okay? So things that I know that I don't know, fine, all right? And then things I don't know that I know. And the part about I don't know that I don't know, which is what I think entrepreneurship generally is all about. When you see these guys, now we use examples like Elon Musk, but you know, Hong Kong has its own great examples as well, okay? But these guys who are constantly, we use the word innovating, iterating, changing, adapting, okay, validating. What are they doing? They're actually living in this part of the world which is, uh, things I don't know that I don't know because they're not just stuck with whatever solution they have today. All right, and as a startup, as an entrepreneur, it is constant change from the macro environment to the internal environment, to hiring to competitors, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I was, I was so, um, I think out of, out of the events that we have at, at, at Paperclip from the startup hustle where I want to give platform to startups who've raised funding to talk about that journey, startups who have raised funding. And then the, the show me the money about real investors who are actually putting money to startups and why are they doing it. But I think one of the most important parts that I think startups should, 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 should listen to are the real entrepreneur event series where I have entrepreneurs who are actually executing. They, they may not be Facebook, okay, it doesn't really matter. But the fact that these are real entrepreneurs competing in businesses today and they're talking about what's it like to compete you know, all this stuff that um, Dragonlaw just, just spoke about, you know, these are all real, and these are, you're talking about small companies, but these happen in, in big companies, not, you know, you've raised funding and, 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 you're, and you're sorted. So, um, anyway, I think I'm just gonna end with that, so you can all grab lunch, but thank you for your time, thanks. Mm -hmm.